G'day everyone. So we've been really keenly watching on uh, YouTube and Twitter all of the deliveries of the uh, Model 3 that are coming into Australia, which is just absolutely amazing. Uh, we've tried to reach out to as many people as we could to say g'day and congratulations. I uh, can't do it to everyone, so to everybody else, amazing, well done. Uh, welcome to the EV family. You're going to have an absolute blast and it's amazing to have you on board. Uh, and congratulations on getting the car and also on making such an amazing commitment. Uh, triple thumbs up if I had three thumbs. Um, today's video, as a result uh, of that, we're going to make some videos about doing long EV uh, road trips or EV road trips into remote areas or even EV road trips into pretty populous areas. The sorts of things you need to plan, uh, the equipment you'll need and all those sorts of things. So today's video is about planning the route uh, let's just get straight into it and jump onto the screen here. So some quick background to lead into tip number one. So here's the current Australian supercharger network taken straight from Tesla's website. Uh, if you have a Tesla, this is the same information your car will use for route planning. You can see that the network is pretty much limited to the eastern seaboard and around to Adelaide in South Australia. Now, if we add in the Tesla destination charges to the mix, you can see there's a lot more options, albeit at slower charge speeds, but there are still huge gaps. Uh, for us in the Northern Territory, nothing between Darwin and Alice Springs, uh, big gaps down the West Coast, not much across the Nullarbor, and pretty sparse from the Northern Territory across, across to Queensland. In fact, um, Tesla charging so sparse where we live that we get messages like this on every, uh, pretty much on every trip we do. If we compare that to a map from an app called PlugShare, you can see immediately there's a lot more charging options, both in terms of coverage across Australia and density. That's more charging options in or near each respective place. So tip number one is to use a third party app to identify charging locations and options for your trip. In Australia, the standard seems to be PlugShare, but if you know of any others, let us know in the comments below. And likewise, if your country or region uses a different app, please let us know in the comments, and that's going to help other EV drivers or people planning EV holidays to your part of the world. One of the other benefits of PlugShare is it has up-to-date information on the different charging options at each location. Uh, plug types, charge rates, as well as recent check-ins and notes from EV drivers who have visited that place. Now, if we use Wim Creek in Western Australia as an example, and if you've been watching our circumnavigation series, you'll know the decisions we had to make around Port Hedland and then Wim Creek. Um, you can see our note here from uh, earlier this year that the site was closed. And then again from our friends, the Deans, who just a couple of weeks ago who went back through there and uh, indicated that the site remains closed. So that's really critical information for route planning. Okay, so on toward tip number two. Once you know your charging locations and options, you can use a dedicated EV route planner to drill in a bit deeper. This step is really only required if you're going into remote areas or areas where the distance between charges is near the maximum range of your car. Let's have a look at the A Better Route Planner site and use Fitzroy Crossing to Broome in WA, which is around 400 kilometers as an example. A better route planner lets you enter your vehicle type, average consumptions, speed limits, and the minimum charge level you feel comfortable with. If you want to get very granular, you can enter information on temperature, wind, road conditions, and a bunch of other stuff. I normally just go with the defaults here. After indicating you're happy to drive at whatever speed will get you there, click on plan route, and you get your outputs. Here you can see estimates on time, and importantly, an indication that you'll need to drive slower to make this trip. Don't panic, this is just indicative for now. In a later video in the series, we'll talk about the actual execution of this trip and how to work with this scenario and have total range confidence. So for now, tip number two is when required, use a dedicated EV route planner. Straight into tip number three. Uh, in that same scenario, Fitzroy crossing to Broome when range might be an issue, it's a good idea to check the change in elevation. Uh, is the route pretty flat, uphill, downhill? Uh, so you can factor that in. Remember, climbing eats range and descents give back, so it's worth knowing. 
If you pop your trip into Google Maps, one trick is to use the cycling option here. As there are more route options after you click, you'll need to make sure that the route hasn't changed. Uh, you can then check changes in elevation and know your trip better. In this trip where there's an early climb, you might be worried about that initial high consumption when you're driving. Knowing that the rest of the trip is largely downhill, that general route awareness can give you real peace of mind. So tip number three, understand the lay of the land with cycling mode. Tip number four is one again, primarily if you're going into remote areas. As you can see on this map, in Australia there's really large areas where there's little or no mobile phone or data coverage. And that can be a problem if you're checking in with loved ones um, on your welfare, uh, making charging or accommodation arrangements for down the track, or a really important one if you're trying to stream music and stay up to date on social media. So tip number four is check a mobile coverage map so you know uh, where you'll have service, but more importantly, when and how long you won't. And related to that last one is a really quick tip five. Have your critical information on hand. That might be a spreadsheet of charging locations, and we're going to cover that in a later video in this series. But trust me when I say that having uh, that information in the cloud is great until you're overnighting or stuck outside a mobile coverage area. So, so tip five, have your critical information on hand. Okay, so I hope you found that uh, really useful. Don't forget this is one in a series, so th th there'll be more of these to come. Um, can't wait to see more people out uh, using their electric vehicles, exploring around, whether that's Model 3s or any others. Uh, it's an, an amazing time, and we're going to see more and more of these uh, cars out and about in Australia. Um, I was lucky enough to talk to some uh, people in Darwin the other day who've got a Model 3 on the way and I just heard last night uh, there may be one here already as well so that would be the I think the probably the first one in the Northern Territory so that's amazing and trying to uh, catch up with that person um, again to everyone else out there congratulations uh, can't wait to see more of your stuff as you're out exploring around Australia and the rest of the world um, if you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to our channel if you don't already, and until next time, safe EV travels.